looking at the muscles acting on the arm, we know for all of these, the insertion is going to be on the humerus because they are acting on the arm. Looking posterior, we see the large latissimus dorsi that goes from the vertebral column, uh, the pelvic ilium, iliac crest, all the way to the humerus. Because again, it is acting on the arm. So it must insert on the humerus. Looking at the anterior view, we can see the pectoralis major, which inserts on the humerus, but then has a broad origin from the sternum to the clavicle. The coracobrachialis goes from the coracoid pro process of the scapula to the humerus. So we can see that in two different views. Uh, the first of which is removing uh, by layer, we can see where the coracoid process of the scapula connects to that coracobrachialis. Again, so this would be the coracoid process where that we are seeing anterior um, and the coracobrachialis goes from the scapula to the humerus. Adding the body back, we can also remove the deltoid and pectoralis major in this view to get a look at the coracobrachialis. The deltoid is the shoulder muscle. It inserts on the humerus and the origin is the spine of the scapula and the clavicle. So this would be for abducting the arm. On the posterior side, we can find the teres major um, by removing the deltoid to make it easier to see is the large muscle, muscle inferior to the scapula. The smaller muscle directly above the teres, superior to the teres major is the teres minor. We can see the rest of the muscles of the rotator cuff. The muscles are named for directional terms. We can see the subscapularis on the anterior surface of the scapula, which means it is resting up against the posterior aspect of the rib cage. So that's the subscapularis. It is you know, underneath the scapula, so to speak, you know, between it and the rib cage. Um, back to the posterior aspect, we can find the supraspinatus, which is above the spine of the scapula. And the infraspinatus, Here's a better look at the supraspinatus that is superior to the spine of the scapula. And the infraspinatus is inferior to the spine of the scapula. So all these mu muscles still insert on the humerus. And there's the infraspinatus highlighted, so it is inferior to the spine of the scapula. No longer isolating the muscles acting on the arm, but adding them to the full torso, would you be able to identify the marked muscles that are here that are acting on the arm? From the posterior aspect, would you be able to identify these muscles that are acting on the arm? One more look at the anterior view. So would you be able to identify these two marked muscles?
And then one last look at the posterior view. Let's do the anterior with the key. And the posterior with the key.